We've run a little over time, but I'd still like to keep us for 10 minutes for questions. Um, but I will be quite tight on the 10 minutes. So um, I don't know if we've got Slido up yet. But is there anybody in the room while we're waiting for Slido who uh, has a burning question they'd like to ask any of the panel? Oh, then oh, we'll, we'll go to Slido. Um, so how will privately owned infrastructure be incentivized to adopt the national digital twin? I don't, that was one that came up from the last one, but I don't know whether, um, Molly, would you like to? I, I'm, I'm happy to address it from a London perspective. Um, I think, I think in my, from, from my perspective in London, I think that digital twins um, are best placed to be sort of managed and supported by the public sector. Um, and so I think that there's a role for the public sector to play in making these tools accessible to private, sec to, 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 to private industry and making the case for their use by demonstrating the benefits. I don't think that it is, uh, I don't think it's too much to ask the public sector to make a business case for the use of digital twins. Um, and I think that's what we're doing in London in many cases. Um, and so I think that's really critical. And I also think there may be a role for legislation in some cases to, uh, I if there's a public good that um, could come from digital twins and it's difficult to incentivize their use. Okay. Um, so one here from Jonathan Black, um, as a geotechnical engineer, how applicable and what challenges do you foresee in translating digital twins with the high variable natural environment reports that we have? Um, I'm wondering actually again whether Molly, that, that might be you given the underground asset register. I think that um, all, I can, all I can do is speak for London, um, but I think that, uh, and, and I'm not an engineer, I should say <coughs> that up front, um, but I think that it's really about bringing in the right partners so that folks understand the different challenges on the ground. So in terms of our underground asset register project, we have BGS partnering um, with us on that to give us an understanding of, of, of their perspective, as well as experts in different um, sectors of utility uh, infrastructure, as well as different sort of geological experts, so that we understand uh, together what the challenges are and work that into the solution that we create. So I don't think there's a, a sort of perfect answer except have the right people in the room to advise uh, so that you can create something that's sustainable. Um, we've got one specifically for you here, Peter. How reliable is the tech? Um, it's just whizzed off my screen. Um, apparently Luis's hit broke this weekend and how reliable is, is, the, is the technology for these digital twins within F1? Uh, <clears throat> the technology is reliable. The use of the technology is generally reliable. Um, for those of you who watched uh, the race this weekend, uh, during qualifying in Monza, you had a fight between two digital twins, one which was uh, what, where should I be on the track to get me travelling the fastest in terms of slipstreams? Another digital twin saying, how long have I got to get to the starting line to do my fast lap at the end of qualifying? In this case, the two digital twins fought against each other and lost, and only two of the cars actually started the last uh, qualifying lap. Um, it was a very good example of the fact that however good the technology is, however good the maths, uh, you're still dealing with people and you need to take that into account. So sometimes digital twins can become uh, too efficient, too effective and not quite resilient enough as they need to be. Thank you. Um, there was a question here which again is just slid off, which I think might be for you, Jamie, which is how can the client supply chain access the smart infrastructure um, index? So it's, it's available online. Um, if you go to index.smartinfrastructure.com, you'll be able to find it. Anyone can do it. I think it's, it's primarily aimed at um, infrastructure owners and, and their wider enterprises. So if you're not an infrastructure owner, you can, you can very much complete it. But it will, it will work best if you complete it in the context of a particular client. Um, and the reason for that is um, some of the questions, for example, around incentivization and commercial models. I know as a member of the supply chain, those vary wildly depending on, on which, which client we're working with on, on any given day. So anyone can, can complete it. It, it is online, um, but it, it needs to be sort of specific to, to an owner to, to really make sense. 
I think we've probably got a couple of minutes if there are any questions from the floor. One here. Question for Peter, primarily. Peter, how important is the client in all this? You know, you, you, you took us through uh, how it's using F1 and, and, and some of the sort of infrastructure. Is it the client that really needs to see the benefit in dr driving a twin? Or is it the, uh, um, the supply chain that needs to sort of play into it? Um, I think it's firstly the client, because the, the client ultimately is the one who spends the money. Um, the supply chain will follow very quickly behind that. So um, when we first started introducing digital twins, when it was showing a, a performance advantage and allowing to win races, then suddenly it became a lot more interesting. And so the supply chain fell behind it. Also, um, as, it be, as it matured, and there was a consistency of, uh, of data, then the supply chain could embrace that and supply to it. Uh, but I think ultimately, money speaks. Um, the person buying needs to be interested. Thank you. Um, we have a lot more questions, but we'll take a look at how we can answer them in a offline um, format, I think, so that we can move on to the next, the next session.